Take care of the loan repayment, will you? While I was at work, I got an unexpected email from my husband. When I hastily contacted him, Grayson calmly began to explain, Oh, sorry about that. I've fallen for a woman. I've decided to start a new life with her. Moreover, he was planning to take the luxury car that he had recently bought in my name with a loan. Despite my attempts to stop him, my husband ignored me, ended the call abruptly, and then became unreachable. In the end, Grayson disappeared with his mistress, leaving behind a huge debt. As a mother to our nine-year-old son, I never imagined such an unfair situation would arise. I was at a loss, not knowing what to do, my mind going blank. I am 34 years old. My name is Gemma. My husband Grayson is the same age. We were a family of three, including our nine-year-old son Jonathan. Jonathan has been incredibly smart since he was young, reading papers on the computer and asking for my opinion on them. Despite being baffled by such complex topics, I was always amazed by his intelligence. In contrast to Jonathan, Grayson was unstable, never holding down a steady job. I worked full-time, feeling anxious about our future. However, around those days, Grayson would finally manage to keep the same job for four years, earning a stable income. Lately, Grayson talked about making memories with the three of us, and we decided to buy a $38,000 camper van. However, since Grayson couldn't pass the finance company's loan review under his name, I ended up taking the loan for the car. Then, on the long-awaited delivery day of the camper van, something unexpected happened. I received an abrupt email from Grayson saying, I'll graciously take the delivered camper van since the loan is in your name. You'll handle the repayments. I called my husband immediately, not understanding what it meant. While I was at work, what's that email about? Well, I've fallen in love with another woman and decided to date her. What? What are you talking about? I intended it to be just a fling, but it turned serious, so I'm thinking of starting over my life with her. Bye, he said, and then unilaterally ended the call. This exchange was the first time I realized I had been betrayed by Grayson, and it was a shocking blow. After that, no matter how many times I called, there was no response from Grayson. I thought, can something like this really happen? When I got home from work and opened the drawer where the divorce papers should have been, they were already gone. Thus, I was left with a huge debt from a $38,000 car loan. Despite my attempts to contact my husband through emails and calls afterward, I never received a reply. Jonathan, noticing my unusual behavior, came to check on me with concern after dinner. Mom, what's wrong? You haven't been eating much lately. Are you okay? Ah, uh, yeah, maybe I'm just tired. Ah, uh, when people lie, they look up to the right. Lying is bad. I've noticed Dad hasn't been home for three days, right? Did something happen between you two? Startled by Jonathan's sharp words, I took a deep breath to calm myself, feeling that I could no longer hide the truth. I decided to tell Jonathan everything. I see, it's just like Dad to do something like that. I asked my son, aren't you sad? He replied, no, I kind of understood from how things were going. Jonathan, seemingly foreseeing the future, appeared unconcerned about his parents' divorce, but I knew he must feel sad about it in his heart. While silently apologizing to Jonathan in my mind, I worked desperately, trying not to think about the dreadful events. However, the body was honest, and gradually, my health deteriorated. There was a training session planned at work that day, but I couldn't stand up and ended up squatting down. Sorry, I can't stand up right now. I need to take a break. I heard my colleagues' voices full of concern, but I couldn't respond and collapsed. When I regained consciousness, I found myself in a hospital room. I received a diagnosis from the doctor that I needed detailed examinations, and I was admitted to the hospital. I thought, I feel so pathetic. It's supposed to be just emotional stress. Looking at the drip in my arm and the white ceiling of the hospital room, tears naturally started to flow. At that moment, Jonathan, who is usually calm, rushed into the room with an extremely worried look, prompting me to quickly wipe away my tears. Mom, what happened? Is it serious? You're not going to die, right? Of course not. I wouldn't leave my dear son alone. Ah, uh, that's good, really. I was called by the school teacher and told that you were taken to the hospital. I was so shocked, my heart nearly stopped. Jonathan is unusually mature for his age, but he's still only nine. I felt a strong resolve to get better for his sake. 
but my condition was worse than I thought, and I was diagnosed with a serious illness. The doctor advised, you should have surgery as soon as possible. Please make a decision quickly. Following the doctor's advice, I underwent surgery. By the time I was discharged, it had been a month since Grayson had left. When I returned home and opened the mailbox, I found a demand letter for the car loan payment. I thought, the repayment should have been automatically deducted from my account. What happened? In a panic, I checked the account balance with my cash card, and the balance, which was originally $25,000, was now only $37.90. I thought, Grayson did this. I want to ask him to return the money, but I can't contact him. What should I do? Since I don't have the camper van, I can't sell it. After Grayson left, everything seemed to be going in a bad direction, and my mood sunk deeper. Seeing me saddened by my series of misfortunes, Jonathan put his hand on my forehead. You look pale. Are you feeling sick again? You don't seem to have a fever, though. I'm fine physically, but you see, your father not only took the car, but also all the money we had saved. I can't work yet due to my physical condition, and now we have no money. I'm at a loss. I see. Then I'll deliver newspapers and I'll search the internet to see if there's any work I can do. Encouraged by my nine-year-old son, I told myself that it wasn't the time to be down. Sorry for worrying you. I can't afford to be weak. I'll change my mindset and try to do whatever I can. Smiling at him, Jonathan also smiled back and then said something unexpected. Let's plan how to get the car back from Dad. How can we do that? I said, not hiding my astonishment. The camper van is in your name, right? Son said. Yes, but what about it? I continued. Then maybe we can... Jonathan suggested an idea that I couldn't even imagine. I never thought such an idea could exist. Furthermore, I have no idea where your father is, I said. Then let's check on my phone, Jonathan replied. A month ago, once when we went hiking as a family, surprisingly, Jonathan, who is usually very reliable, got lost. At that time, we bought a kid's cell phone on Jonathan's suggestion and installed a GPS app on it, which both Grayson and I could access. With this app, I can see where Dad is in real time, and he's been moving around a lot. Oh, is that so? But what if we find him, and he just says something vague and escapes again? As I pondered this, Jonathan smiled and made an intriguing suggestion. Don't worry, I've already taken precautions. What did you just say? To my astonishment, Jonathan had acted independently while I was in the hospital, achieving something unbelievable. I thought I can't believe such a smart child came from me. Understanding Jonathan's words, I was simply amazed. He had even caught wind of Grayson's mistress. All right, let's teach Dad who betrayed us a lesson. Okay, let's start the plan right away, he said. Together, my son and I prepared for that moment. With Jonathan by my side, I'm invincible. Bring it on, anywhere, anytime. Then four days later, my phone rang. Ah, it's me. Please, I need your help, Grayson told. Oh, who might this be? I wondered. Don't play dumb. It's your husband. Obviously, I'm being questioned by the police about you. At this rate, they might ask me to come to the police station voluntarily. Help me out. Oh, is that so? Just wait a moment then, I said. I immediately went with my son to where Grayson was. And to my surprise, it was a forest park near our house where camping was possible. Grayson was being questioned by the police in front of his car, looking bewildered. Feeling pathetic, I sighed and told the police, we need to have a talk as a couple and ask them to return for a while. At that time, Grayson seemed uncomfortable being watched by the people around us and urged Jonathan and me to get into the car. Inside the car, Grayson's mistress was sitting cross-legged, glaring at us. Sorry about that. Thanks for coming, but why did the police suddenly show up at my place? I don't get it. That's because I filed a report about the missing camper van, I answered calmly. What? Why would you do that? The husband puzzled. It's obvious, isn't it? My car was stolen. Grayson, foolishly thinking that actions between spouses can't be criminal, was saying nonsensical things. But the world isn't that naive, you know. You filed for divorce, remember? Forgot? So we are strangers now, and you're driving a stranger's car without permission. That's a crime. Jonathan figured all this out. Typical, sharp as ever, that kid. But I didn't steal the car, I just borrowed it for a bit, my husband panicked. Oh, is that so? Well, I'd like to use my car now, so could you return it? That would be really helpful. 
As I reached out my hand, asking Grayson to return the keys, he reluctantly handed them over. After confirming it was returned, Jonathan quietly started talking. Hey, why did you abandon your family and choose to play around with this woman? Caught off guard by his son's unexpected question, Grayson was flustered and awkwardly scratched his head. Seeing this, Grayson's mistress chuckled smugly and started talking. It's because I'm more attractive than your mother. Look at me. You can see it, right? He fell head over heels for me and decided to leave his family. Quiet. I didn't ask you, old lady. Dad, you answer. Clementine was silenced by Jonathan's stern tone, but Grayson remained quiet. If you can't explain, that's fine. I'll just have the police come back and arrest you. Wait, how do you know all this? My husband didn't understand. Remember when Jonathan got lost? After that, as a precaution, we bought him a kid's cell phone and installed a GPS app. Did you forget? We installed it on your phone, too, so I knew where you were all this time. By the way, I later found out from Jonathan that he had pretended to get lost during our family hike because he wanted a cell phone. I was amazed at Jonathan's ability to think and act so strategically. I suspected something was off with Dad, so I came up with this plan to monitor his actions. You really are a terrifying child, Grayson said. Jonathan replied, I will never become as blindly betraying of significant people as you, Father, as I grow older. Grayson, faced with the hard truth Jonathan told, was a pitiful adult unable to offer any rebuttal. In contrast, seeing Jonathan, only nine but able to think and speak his mind firmly, gave me a sense of strength as a mother. I felt I couldn't lose, especially in settling things properly. Also, return the $25,000 you withdrew from my account right now. That was our joint property as a couple. I don't have to return it. That money was what I saved little by little since I was single. After all, you always quit your jobs midway, so we hardly ever saved money together. I was appalled to hear that the $25,000 had been squandered by Grayson and his mistress. It was the moment I felt relieved about divorcing him. So, that's how it is. But if you stole and used the car and my money, that's going to be a serious crime. What? You just sent the police away so it's not their business anymore, right? I only said we would talk. I have no intention of withdrawing the complaint. I must add the theft of my money to the report. Mom, should I call the police now? I can do it with just one button on my phone. Clementine, Grayson's mistress, had been watching our conversation, but quickly tried to get out of the camper van. At that moment, she let out a scream that echoed around. The reason was that outside the car door, Clementine's parents were standing, their faces red with anger, about to explode in fury. Startled, she stepped back as her parents yelled at her. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, don't be so angry, but why are you here, Mom and Dad? I called your parents beforehand, Jonathan said. What? Why? The truth was, during my hospital stay, Jonathan had visited Grayson's office and tearfully told them, My dad left the house with a woman we don't know, and my mom collapsed. Seeing Jonathan's sorrowful and frail state, the people at Grayson's office suspected Clementine, who had left the company with Grayson, and gave Jonathan her parents' address. Grayson and Clementine had been overly friendly at the office, and there were photos showing them together at the welcome party for new employees, looking like a couple. After learning from the office people that you commuted from your parents' house, I went there with your photo. Your parents came out when I visited, then I told them everything that had happened. So today I contacted Clementine's parents and asked them to wait nearby for a while. I said, how could you do this to me? The worst, Clementine told. I don't want to hear that from you. That's my line, I replied. By the way, your stomach seems quite big. When is the baby due? In four months, Clementine replied. What? Wait a minute. That doesn't add up with when you met my husband. You two met only four months ago, right? What's going on? It's not time for the baby to be born yet. Hearing this for the first time, Grayson stared at Clementine, eyes wide. Wait, what does that mean? Are you stupid? Don't you get it? It takes about nine months from conception to birth, which means the child she's carrying isn't yours. You're so foolish, I said. What do you mean, Clementine? Have you been deceiving me? Ah, uh, I almost got away with it. Can't help it now that I'm caught. You're so naive. You can't see through lies at all. Really a fool. Don't mock me. 
My whole life is ruined because of you. What were you thinking? Grayson and Clementine started an ugly argument, but nobody intervened, letting them have it out. Meanwhile, we contacted the police again to explain the situation. As it began to get dark, the forest park was brightly lit by the red lights of the police cars. No, really, I was wrong, I was truly wrong. I'm sorry, I'll work hard and never cheat again, so please just don't arrest me. Dad, people don't change that easily, especially lazy people like you. Exactly, Jonathan's right. I can't trust you at all. Reflect on your actions and pay for your crimes at the police station. If I get arrested, I won't be able to pay back the money. Is that okay with you? I don't mind. Pay me back after you've atoned for your sins. Take your time. Don't worry. I've already found you a place to work. Let's see. There's Jonathan's child support, plus the $25,000 you stole from me. I'm not sure how much it will all add up to, but you'll work and pay it all back. I had one last thing to say to Clementine, the mistress. You might think you're just an onlooker, but don't forget you're an accomplice to Grayson's theft. Be prepared for that. When I told them that Clementine would have to pay if Grayson couldn't return the stolen money, she shivered in fear. Clementine asked her parents for help, but they refused, saying, We disown a daughter who causes trouble for others. Thus, Grayson and Clementine were taken away in a police car together. Thanks to Jonathan's smart strategy, we were able to punish Grayson and his mistress Clementine, though they were released from detention soon after. They faced a hefty payment to me. I, through a lawyer, claimed $25,000 in damages. Additionally, I made Grayson agree to pay $700 a month in child support for Jonathan. I introduced Grayson to a subcontracting factory of the company I work for. The support and other charges I claimed from Grayson would be deducted from his salary and paid into my account. I also sold the camper van and was freed from the auto loan. Since then, my health has improved remarkably and I'm now energetically committed to my job. Jonathan has been actively helping with household chores and errands. I want to keep moving forward strongly so that Jonathan can pursue the path he loves without giving up.